Delta, turn on the vacuum. Hey guys, so what you just saw is my old Roomba 650 being controlled by Alexa using a servo to physically push the button. These older Roombas don't have any sort of Wi-Fi connectability or anything like that. All it has is the ability to set a schedule, but we never leave the house at the same time every day, for example, and we just want it to work where when we leave the house, that button will be pushed. So the only way that I could figure this out was to use a servo, and after doing a quick search on the internet, I found that you can use these Wemos D1 boards to emulate a Belkin Wemo switch in Alexa and allow you to execute whatever sketch in Arduino you want done in order to, in my case, move the servo a little bit to push that button. So today I'm going to show you how I set this project up. Let's get started. What's up guys, it's Drew from Taylor Tech and on this channel we do smart home tech reviews, installations, and DIY guides. So if you're new here, consider subscribing. And hey, at any time, check out the video description down below for show notes and product links for everything mentioned in this video. Alright, so the first thing you're going to need is a Wemos D1 board similar to this. There are other variations of these ESP8266 Wi-Fi chip based microcontrollers, but this one has a lot of great features for other projects I had in mind. So I went ahead and bought bought like 10 of these at once. They're right around four or five dollars a piece. This project in all will be under ten dollars. And like I said, everything will be linked down in the description below. So for starters, you need a board like that. You need some jumper cables and you also need a servo. Now, a few other things that you will need is a power supply. It all depends how you set this up in your scenario. You may not even be wanting to push a button on your robot vacuum. It could be pushing a button on your Keurig coffee maker, flipping a switch on the wall, or any number of other scenarios that you can use a servo like this to move something physically. So originally, I didn't really want anything to be physically mounted onto the robot like I ended up doing. I wanted everything to be on the base station where it charges or on the wall next to it so we could have the servo move an arm or something to push the button when it's docked because it should go back to its dock when it gets low on battery. Well, as you can see, I didn't end up doing it that way. It would have been a lot of different moving parts. For you, it may work out, but for me, what I ended up doing was actually using the serial port. As you can see here, the Roomba has its own built-in serial port that actually does output 15 volts. Now, the Wemos D1 has a built-in regulator to where it can accept anywhere from 9 to 24 volts into this VIN pin right here. While that was enough to power the board, it's not enough to power the servo. So that's why I have this external battery pack right here. This is a temporary solution. I will have to figure out a better power solution for the servo. I may end up scratching this whole idea and mounting it on the wall after I figure out a better situation there. But for now, I think this battery pack, it's a 10,000 milliamp hour pack and it outputs 5 volts at 2.4 amps. It should be plenty to power the servo for a couple of weeks at least. I will need to obviously pull this off and charge it, but just as a proof of concept, this is working great so far. Alright, so the way I have this wired up is actually really simple. Don't let it intimidate you. I am by no means an expert with Arduino or microcontrollers or anything that has to do with this stuff. I kind of just learned it as I go and I have the basics down. So here I am teaching you guys. So basically, like I said, the serial port here outputs five volt or 15 volts and the two up at the top here are positive and ground is down there at the bottom. So I have the positive going to the VIN port here and the negative going to the ground port right next to it. And then I have from the external battery pack, I have the positive and negative from that, the positive going to the servo and the negative going to a different ground port on the board. And then from the ground on the servo, which is the brown wire is turning into a green wire and going to another ground port on the board. You want to keep all the grounds connected, obviously. And the orange wire on the servo is the signal wire and that signal wire is going to pin D5. 
represented by this blue cable. So that's pretty much it. All we're doing is powering the servo, powering the board, and sending the D5 signal cable to the servo to push the button. Now let's go ahead and jump on the computer and I can show you how I got this programmed. Now, like I said, I am not a programmer, I am not a coder or anything like that. I took this code from another YouTuber. I'll leave his information down below and I modified it a little bit to work with mine. He actually used his servo to keep his computer awake when he is in the office or something like that. So he only had it turn once. And as you saw, I have mine turn twice to push the button twice because it needs to wake up and then it needs to be told to turn on. I'm oh, sorry I don't have the green screen up anymore. As you can see, I got a new studio here and I don't have the green screen back yet. It's kind of still under construction, so bear with me there. But if you haven't used Arduino before, don't get intimidated. It's really simple. I will walk you through it. So you're going to need the Arduino IDE, which is this right here. I'll leave a link. The first link down below will be where you can download the Arduino IDE. So when you're done with that, go ahead and open it up. And if you are using a Wemos D1 board like I am, you're going to need to download the, board man the boards manager for that particular board or similar boards with the ESP8266 chip on it. So if you go to File and Preferences, down here where Additional Board Manager URLs is listed, you will need to enter this URL to download the rest of the boards. Now this, will, this URL will also be down in the description below. So once you do that, go up into Tools, Board, and Boards Manager. And then after the Platform Index downloads, just up at the top, you can search for ESP8266 and look for the Community one. Now as you see, I have version 2.4.2 installed, and they do have version 2.5 out, but I found that 2.5 doesn't have the correct board for whatever reason, so your mileage may vary. Try out the newest version, which is usually the best one to go with but for me I found that 4.2 works the best. So after you install that library if you go into board you can scroll down and find the Wemos D1 right here. Now this is the R1 I have the R2 here but the R1 version still works for the R2. Upload speed should be 921600 and everything else should be default. Just make sure everything looks like mine. Now that that's set up, close out your Arduino IDE and you will need to add some libraries to your library folder. Now to find your library folder, if you're on Windows, it is similar on Mac, but not exactly the same. You go to My Documents and Arduino and Libraries. Now your library folder will not have as many as, as mine does. It should have all the Adafruit ones I believe but I have quite a few more because in order to use the code it includes different libraries that are not default so I will leave a link to where you can download all of the libraries necessary for this project and then when you do that copy everything from that folder into your library folder which can be found here just go ahead and copy and paste it right into there so that Arduino can recognize it. Now the last thing you're going to need is the code itself. Now that can be found in a link down below as well. And if you open that file up, you can find a few different files in here. And the last one is the Arduino code. I called it vacuum button. All right, so here is the Arduino code itself. There are a few things you are going to need to change. The first one is the SSID for your 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi network and the password right below it. Now, if you are using this on your vacuum and you want it to call, you want it to be called vacuum when Alexa recognizes it, then there's really nothing else you need to do. But if you want to use it on something else, um, you want to change everything that says vacuum, like for instance here and here, you want to change that to whatever switch you call it. But an easier way to do that is press Control F and you want to find the term vacuum and then you want to replace it with whatever you want it to be called. So if you want to use it on a switch, we could just call it switch one and replace all. Now everything that used to say vacuum now says switch one. I'm going to change it back to vacuum. So I'm going to search for switch one and replace with vacuum. Replace all. Okay. 
And finally, it depending on how many times you want your servo to push the button, you will need to change what the servo is actually doing and that can be found in this section here. Now, if you only want the servo to push the button once, you can take out half of this here. This portion here will only have the servo move once. It is in two blocks. This block and this block is basically just copy and pasted twice in order to make the servo move twice. And that is pretty much it. As you can see here, after the servo is done moving, it has a void vacuum off line, which means that it turns the switch in Alexa back off after it is turned on. So you don't need to worry about turning it back off. You just need to say turn on and it will push the button. All right, so after that is all squared away, go ahead and plug in your controller. And if everything is done correctly, hit upload. It will compile the sketch and then upload to the board. All right, so it's done uploading. We can go ahead and unplug and set this aside. And now we have to have Alexa discover the devices. Alexa, discover devices. Starting discovery. This will take up to 20 seconds. If you haven't already, please enable the smart home skill for your smart device from the Alexa app. So like I mentioned, this Wemos D1 board emulates a Belkin Wemo switch, and there is no smart home skill that we need to enable for that. So that's a nice plus. I found vacuum, and you can control it by saying, turn on vacuum. All right, there we go. So it has successfully connected to our Wi-Fi network, and it is broadcasting the signal for Alexa to pick up, and we should be good to go. So if everything is done correctly, all we have to do is tell it to turn on, and the servo will move twice in my case. If you edited that code to only move once, then it will only move once for you. So turn on the vacuum. There's one. There we go. All right, so in this case, it will go ahead and do its cleaning and it will go back to the base and it will, you know, charge itself and then put it back, itself back to sleep and now it's ready for the next command. Now this can be added to a routine so you can say something else or added to your presence sensors so when you actually leave the house, it will clean, which is how I am going to set it up. I'm gonna clean up this wiring a little bit, make it look a little bit better. And like I said, long term, I'm actually gonna have it probably mount it on the wall so I don't have to worry about an external battery pack at all. Or open this thing up and use a different power source to be able to control the servo because like I said, this serial port is not strong enough to power the servo as well. If you're wondering where I got this case for my Wemos D1, I actually 3D printed it. I'll leave a link down below to where you can find the file, it's on Thingiverse. If you don't have a 3D printer, there are a lot of websites where you can actually purchase 3D printed parts for just about any file that you send them. So. Keep that in mind if you are interested in some of these parts. I could, I'm probably going to print a mount for the servo. This is just stuck down with some strong double-sided tape. Same with the battery pack here, but this is just temporary. So hope you guys enjoyed this. Hope it gave you some inspiration for some of your own projects. The possibilities with a servo, pushing a physical button is pretty much endless. It's just kind of up to your imagination. And I would love to hear what you guys come up with down in the comments below. Also, I want to give a shout out to my Patreon supporters, which you can see right down below. If you want to help support me on Patreon, you can click the link over here. Or if you want to check out some other videos, you can check out the videos down there. And if you enjoyed it, leave a like down below and consider subscribing. I'll see you guys in the next video.